dirt roads are becoming few and far between. Even in my life, I've seen many get paved over and the surrounding land get stripped for housing and commercial property. Yet, the deeper in the rural south you go, the more dirt roads from a time gone by seem to remain, many of them simply due to the people feeling like the surrounding land is cursed somehow. Now, a lonely dirt road named Ghost Town Road, with a site referred to as The Altar in the Woods by some and Devil's Rock by others? Okay, I'm in. Everyone loves a good, strange, weird, or bizarre story. Well, welcome to the American South, where dark legends and haunted history lurk around every corner. Where superstition, folklore, and a touch of backwoods magic blend with everyday culture. Some say, in order to survive. This is Dixie After Dark. We find ourselves back in Salem, Alabama, a few miles outside the city of Opelika. Out past the quaint little town square, deeper into the woods, you can find Ghost Town Road, an old, dusty red clay road stretching deep into the Alabama wilderness. The majority of the land is owned by a paper company, so the scene is mostly tall pines and not much else. Interestingly enough, though, the entry of the road is at Stroud's Crossroads, mentioned in our previous video. Turning onto that road to leave behind the haunted legends of Eli Stroud Cemetery may make you have a safer feeling, but from what I've found, that would be a false sense of security. Not long ago, it was strongly advised that people stay away from Ghost Town Road. Why is that? Well. It started when locals began finding bones around the area. The remains began sparsely at first, but seemed to grow and count and culminate in the certain area, a large granite outcropping. It was easy to dismiss the find since many local hunters leased the land during hunting season from the paper company. Well, until some of the bones were later determined to be human. The bones in question were sent to an anthropologist in North Alabama who determined the bones to belong to a male that had been deceased for more than 100 years. Eli Stroud, perhaps? I'm not sure, but the close proximity of this site to the grave robbery at Eli Stroud Cemetery leaves dots that just beg to be connected. This, of course, sparked the interest of local law enforcement, as well as the worries in the small community. Worries well placed, because over the next few years, darker findings would take place. The body of a decapitated man was found at the same site, stuffed in a barrel. Allegedly, when investigators were searching the area around where the body was discovered, they found a large granite outcropping covered in blood and determined that to be the site of the murder. The place is now known as the Altar in the Woods. It isn't known whether the body was ever identified, or even if the head was found. This set the small community ablaze with panic and rumors. The local sheriff's department had a mess on their hands now, and began patrolling the area day and night. Regardless of that fact, though, it is said that a short time later a body of a young female was found at the same site, although I have not been able to confirm that story. One of the most recent reports comes from 2006. A deputy patrolling Ghost Town Road came across a vehicle at night, parked at the Altar in the Woods location. Inside were three young men and a young woman. By this time, it wasn't uncommon for teens to visit the location out of morbid curiosity. The deputy approached the car and had everyone step outside and radioed for backup. Once another deputy arrived, the car was searched and the expected drugs or alcohol wasn't found. 
But what was found, however, according to reports anyway, was rope, the shovel, duct tape, and what appeared at the time to be some sort of ritualistic dagger. The group was separated and questioned about the items. The males involved all agreed that the items in the trunk were for work and that they were all involved in construction. When asked about the knife, the driver only smiled and claimed it to be his hunting knife. Yeah, sure. The deputy questioning the teenage girl became even more alarmed. She said she had no idea who the three men were. They had picked her up from a friend's house to, quote, go party. What an idiot. Well, thankfully, the naive attitude of the teenage girl worried the deputies. With no grounds to detain or arrest the three boys, they were forced to let them go. But the deputies did talk the girl into coming back with them to the station, where she called her parents to pick her up. Locals believe she was close to being the site's next victim. And Darren's theory of natural selection seems to agree. To worry the locals even more, the night in question was June 6, 2006, or 666. What jumps out at me from this account is the fact that they were all teenagers. Were the items in the trunk truly circumstantial? Was this a budding copycat group of the original events from the 80s and 90s? Or are we catching a glimpse of a multi-generational group at work? The sad thing is, it'll take at least another grim event for us to know for sure. Even though the years have passed with no more bodies or scattered bones, a strange change has come across the area. The once beautiful wooded area has now become a virtual dump, with people illegally tossing garbage on the side of the road at the site. Apart from the garbage, a negative feeling seems to have taken over the place, according to locals. Strange balls of light have been said to shoot from the altar in the woods to chase off curious trespassers. Some even report the scream of a banshee, or a banshee witch, as southerners say. Others report seeing tall, black hooded figures that are known to try to stop passing vehicles. Strangely absence is any story of a headless figure, which to me tends to have me lean away from simple over embellishment of stories that have happened at the place. Deputies still patrol the area heavily to this day, something that I found out the hard way and they also rely on the community to call in any suspicious people or behavior. So is this all local stories run amok or has an oppressive negative power really taken over the area? With the meager population of the area Let's just see what we can find. January 9th, 2016. One dead, one arrested in Lee County's first homicide of 2016. On Friday, January 8th, around 10.17 p.m., a man was shot and killed in the 1600 block of Lee Road 246 in Salem, which locals call Ghost Town Road. March 9th, 2016 dead horse tied to tree worrying Lee County residents. Investigators are looking into a strange and gruesome discovery off a dirt road in Lee County. Whether you're hunting, hiking, or taking a drive, it could be quite an unpleasant thing to stumble upon off Lee County Road 246. A dead horse was found tied to a tree, something that some find suspicious. The animal's legs were tied together, a muzzle covering its mouth, and it was tied to a tree. October 16th, 2016. Smith Station man shot in the head, killed Saturday night. No suspects in custody. A man was killed in Lee County last night after being shot in the head, Coroner Bill Harris said. The incident happened Saturday night in Smith Station on Lee Road 246. January 1st, 2020. 
Three suspects were arrested for child abuse in Smith Station after a welfare check at a residence in the 500 block of Lee Road, 246. During the check, Lee County Sheriff's investigators and personnel from the County Department of Human Resources made contact with four children, aged 3, 4, 10, and 11 years old. Investigators saw two wood-constructed cages with clasp and locks. The Lee County Sheriff's Office said that there was evidence that the children had been locked in the cages on multiple occasions. April 17, 2023 A teenager is dead following a single vehicle crash in Smith Station. According to officials, the crash occurred on Lee Road 179 near the intersection of Lee Road 246 around 3 a.m. on Sunday, April 16th. This intersection is Stroud's Crossroads. The list goes on and on, and that was just a quick news search. Me and some friends in high school found the remains of a sacrificed goat on that road, right there on Alter Rock. I straight lived on this road my entire life, and spooky shit does happen. My grandmother and I were driving down it one afternoon about seven years ago, and this woman in torn and dirty clothing was walking down the side of the road. We stopped to ask if she needed help, and she didn't even look at us, just kind of stopped and listened to my grandmother. She never spoke back to us, so my grandmother put her window up and drove off. I looked back to watch her some more, being a weird 12 year old, and she was gone. There was no way she could have moved out of sight that fast. This place has some bad history, too much to put in the comment section of a YouTube video. About nine years ago, my friends and I went dirt road riding on this road, and a beam of blinding light entered our truck until we got to the main road. It's the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I live here, and yeah, it's pretty bad. I've seen the cult members at night, and they just kind of stare at you until you go away if you're in a vehicle. In 95, a man was hired by a wife to kill her husband, and took him out to what is now coined Altar Rock, chopped up in an oil drum with a pentagram drawn in blood and six red candles. Dude is not in prison, and is roaming free in Columbus, Georgia. If you go into the waterfall, there are human skeletal remains a bit back, and it smells absolutely ghastly. I've ridden bikes up and down the road as a kid, and a meth dealer up the street would just dump bodies in bed sheets within the woods. There was a lady found under the bridge in the early 2000s, and I went to school with that lady's nephew. Again. The meth dealer did that one too. There's a lot of scary crap here. It's interesting though. It's interesting though. <laughs> okay then. Well, yeah, sure. If it wasn't interesting, I wouldn't be reporting on it. But I'm not trying to run across any crazed meth dealers. Ghosts and cults are one thing, but I guess you have to draw the line somewhere, right? Hopefully, that's a well-placed, smart line, but only time will tell.